DevOps in many ways is the logical conclusion of Agile. With Agile, we have tried to deliver value to the users in a quite a fast clip, which means introducing change. We did that by getting rid of role-based teams. When we have teams of BAs that talk to the users, gather the requirements, then pass the requirements document to the teams of developers who design and build the code, who then pass that code to the test teams to test it, Role-based teams lead to sign-offs, and sign-offs lead to rigidity and a barrier to change. It slows everything down. So we have eliminated the role-based teams and gone for team, cross-functional teams where we have all three roles within the one team. That reduces the need for handoffs, allows the team to respond a lot quicker and deliver value at a high pace. But the problem we face is that we left operations out in the cold. While the development teams are motivated to deliver high value, to deliver change quickly, the operation teams now become the bottleneck because they are motivated to maintain stable environments and repeatable environments. So while the development teams deliver this change quickly, we now find that the, develop, the operations teams are not ready to deploy it at the same pace. So DevOps is bringing the operations team into the fold, getting development and operations teams to work closely in order to deliver this change into the hands of the users as fast as we can, but still maintaining the stability and repeatability of the production environments. Well, the first benefit, obviously, as a result of where it came from was the fact that we get the change into the hands of the users faster. So the speed of having something usable for the users allows us to get the return on the investment from the development a lot faster. As well as that, we have the cultural aspect. DevOps is DevOps requires a reasonable change in the culture of the organization, and that change results in better quality of what we're producing at the end, rather than having one small part of the team focusing on quality. The whole team really needs to take responsibility for quality and for the delivery process. That also shows in the concepts of continuous improvement. An important part of DevOps is monitoring pretty much everything, the delivery, the, the deployment, and monitoring the system in, while it is being used, and taking advantage of what we learn from that to improve the whole process of developing software. So that also gives us a continually improving process. It's still quite early days in that respect. Not all systems are suitable for taking DevOps to the full extreme. But the tools, uh, first of all, are getting there now. And then, of course, there are the cultural changes that we need to worry about. So we are seeing this, while a number of companies are moving towards it, there are also companies that are starting to treat this as more of an aspirational goal and working towards it without necessarily planning to go to the, the final steps. I think it's suitable for pretty much everyone, certainly if you treat it as that aspirational goal because the culture, the tooling and so forth is always useful. It really comes down to me for the, the final step of the DevOps pipeline can we have the full process of the developers make their changes, check it in, the automated tests are run and if everything passes then rolls out to production. That last step of automatically rolling out to production depends on your architecture. Not so much the culture of your team, but do you have a 
monolith. If it's a monolith, it's very hard to deploy and you probably don't want to have an automated rollout like that. You probably want a manual trigger in the process. Whereas if you have a quite a distributed architecture using, for example, microservices, quite modular, then that last step is certainly a very real possibility. The biggest thing probably will be the cultural aspect of it. DevOps is often thought of as more a set of tools, that if you're using this tool, you're doing DevOps, but the tool is just one part of it, and probably more important than the use of the tool is the culture that we put in place. The culture that means that everyone is responsible for quality and for the delivery process, not just the testers, not just one particular role. And I think the first step really needs to be assessing the cultural maturity of the organisation and is it ready to start moving in this direction before you even start thinking about the tools. I think more than anything it is going to be the growing adoption of it as we start making those cultural changes that's the big key the tool sets are pretty much already there there's plenty of tooling available we have the techniques to allow us to apply this so it's more than anything it's going to be establishing the culture in the organization and migrating the architecture to a more distributed component or modularized style that allows us to take advantage of the, the tool sets and the approach.